Hi everyone, it's Lindy Yan from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I'm going to show you one of the brand new puppet sets from Art Impressions. This is a part of a series of these puppets. I'll talk about those a little bit more as we go along. But let's take a look at this set. So this is a set of dies. There's no stamps, just the dies. And I'm going to use my steel die cutters to cut these apart. And let's take a closer look. That's the jacket. And then these are the little fur trim pieces for the sleeves. This is the trim for in front of the jacket. And I'll just kind of place these on here so you can get a better look at what we're talking about. This one is the belt. And then there's a little buckle. There's the pants and some trim for the pants and the two little boots. Next, we've got the mittens. And then we have this piece here, which is to assemble the body, the face and the mustache and beard. And then we've got the hat, the trim for the hat, and a little pom-pom. And then there's that beard and mustache. And these two little pieces are for some eyebrows. And then there's a little oval one for the nose. And that last one is a set of eyeglasses. So I'm going to run these pieces through my Scout die cutting machine using some Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So once I've gotten all those pieces cut out, I'm going to go ahead and start to do some inking. This is the Distress Oxide ink in Lost Shadow. So it's a really, really light gray. And that's just to give a little bit of shadowing to my pieces. And I'm using a teeny tiny little blender brush to do this because I don't want to come in too far with that shadowing. So I'll do all the pieces that have the white, the little mustache, the beard, all the trim work on his outfit. And then later we'll add a little bit of glitter to all the, the fur on the trim of his hat and his little coat. And for, even for the eyebrows, I'm putting a little bit of that shadow down along the bottom of each of the eyebrows. Now, again, this is part of a puppet series. There's a snowman puppet, and there's also an Easter bunny puppet set. And for the Easter bunny one, you can create a little male or female bunny, whatever you want to do. So if they have some cute little outfits. I kind of think of these more as paper dolls, but... The name is Puppet, and for this, for the boots on this little set, I'm going to start off with the hickory smoke. And then I placed it back in where I die cut it from. So if you want to keep those little negative pieces where you do your die cutting, sometimes it holds these little pieces in place for you a little bit easier. And then I'm adding some black soot, and I'm going to blend that out. I can pop this little boot in place and do the exact same thing. And then for his pants, I'm going to switch over. I'll start off with the sponge sugar, and I'm going to place that all over the pants. And then for a little bit of shadowing, I'm going to switch over to the lumberjack plaid. And again, I'm using some small blending brushes here so I don't get too much of that ink. I'll place that lumberjack plaid down towards the bottom and then I'll just start doing some blending. And you can see there I'm just cleaning off that blender brush as I'm going along. I don't want to get too much of that red up into the top of the pants. And you can blend as much as you need to there. I'm adding a little bit more of a shadow. I'm just picking up a little more ink and blending it out. Now for the jacket, I'm just trying to determine where that trim that fur trim is on the jacket because I do want a little shadow coming up from underneath that trim. So first I'm going to start again with that sponge sugar and then I'm going to add that lumberjack plaid again. And here's where I'll check and just kind of like I'll see how far I need that shadowing to go. I'm also going to place a little bit of shadowing above the fur on the on the sleeves as well. So I'm going to blend this out. Again, I'm kind of just lightly blending it and I'm checking there and it doesn't look like I have enough shadowing up from underneath 
that trim. So I'm going to put a little bit more down and then we'll do some more blending. So you can keep adding ink and blending this out as much as you need to. Just kind of spend a little bit of time. This is really easy coloring though. So you could absolutely use your markers to do your coloring. You could use your Copic markers or you know I love to use my Zig markers. So you could absolutely color these with your markers, your colored pencils, anything you prefer to work with. But in this case, I thought I'd just show you how simply and easily we can color these in just using our ink pads and a small blender. So it makes it really fun. And I love these oxide inks because they blend really easily. You get a nice smooth finish. With Tattered Rose, I'm going to do the face of our little Santa, but not a lot of it's going to show. But I am going to put a little more color on each side and then blend it in towards the middle. And then let's go back to that hickory smoke and put a little bit of color on the belt just to get started. And then with the black soot, I'm going to place that on either side of that belt. I'll also use that hickory smoke on the belt buckle. But later on, we're gonna add some silver ink to that. You certainly could have die cut it from your silver metallic cardstock, but I'm gonna show you a really fun little way to, to make that into a little metallic buckle. So I added some black to either side of that belt and just kind of blended towards the center, back to the sponge sugar to do his little nose. And I did place it back in that negative just to hold it in place because it's so tiny. I'm switching over to the iced spruce and this is really pretty. It kind of gives a snowy, icy feel. And I thought I didn't want to do the gloves in the green. I didn't want to add really any green to this. I wanted to keep it just in the reds and the turquoise colors. But you certainly could add some greens to this. It would certainly look really pretty. I just thought I'd keep it really soft because we're going to do a really soft background. So I took the face and I added the, the hat and the beard, and then I'll add the little pom-pom to the top of the hat. And I'm adding the pants. I'm sorry it's off camera a little bit there, but I'm just adding the pants. And now let's go ahead and add that trim work that goes onto his jacket. Sometimes I get so into what I'm doing, I forget that I need to be in the camera so that you guys can see it too. But you can see how really easily this whole thing comes together. Let's put that little buckle on. And then I'm just placing an acrylic block on there to let that dry. Now we've got the little fur for each of the sleeves. Oh, and I did add his little pants down at the bottom there. We've got the fur trim for the hat. Let's add that. So this comes together really easily. It's so cute and so fun to put together. I know when I did the other puppets, and I've done videos on the both the snowman puppet and the Easter Bunny puppets. I did some gift card holders, and so you might wanna check those out. I will link those down below for you, as well as on my blog, if you wanna take a look at those. Those were really fun to do, and I kind of think of them, like I said, like little paper dolls. Just take all the pieces, and you just start building them. What's really fun to do is just die cut all the pieces, and you can give them to somebody so that they can just do their assembly. Kids love to do these. It's really fun and it's a fun little project to put together and you can do all the die cutting ahead of time. They can do the coloring and the assembly. Certainly with little ones you could have them just color with their crayons. You could even just die cut it from some colored cardstock so that there's no coloring needed. Let's go ahead and pop on his head. Just going to put a little glue down at the bottom of the beard. We'll position that down. And let's add the rest of the pieces. We've got his little mustache, and then we've got the little nose. And I'm just trying to determine exactly where that needs to go. I'll pop that mustache on first. 
and then we'll put that nose right above it. I'm just gonna hold that in place while I pop that down. And then let's go ahead and put on the eyebrows. And I am leaving that shadowed part down towards the bottom of the eyebrow. So I added that little bit of gray to the bottom of each of those earlier. So we'll just place those in right, kind of coming up from underneath the, the little fur on the hat. Now I'm masking off the cheeks. I could have done this before I put this together, but I didn't think of it. So I'm taking one of my small quarter inch round blending brushes, and I did put a little post-it tape over the mustache, and I'm going to add a little pink to the cheeks. And then I used my Zig blender pen to blend that out a little bit. And then what I decided to do was add the eyes using my Pit Artist pen. This is a detailed pen. This is a 0.1 millimeter permanent black pen. And I'm also going to use that to put some stitching on the top and the bottom of the belt. And then we'll add a little stitching to the sleeves as well. And this just adds a little more interest and I think brings everything together. Here you see I have my white gel pen. When I was blending out some of that pink, it got a little bit onto his mustache. I'm using that white gel pen and I'm just coloring over that, just dotting on a little bit of that white so that that pink doesn't show. So that's a quick little fix for you. And then I took the Wink of Stella clear glitter pen and I'm adding it to all of the fur trim. That's going to add some beautiful sparkle. I did add a little bit more. I wanted a nice layer of that sparkle on his trim work. And I hope you can see that there. I'll show you that again closer later on. And then here's the little trick for making this belt buckle metallic. These are the signal pens. Usually you see me using a white one, but there is gold and silver. And I'm going to use the silver to create that really pretty metallic-y look. So that was a really easy way to add that. I've got my a2 rectangle double stitch dies from Art Impressions. I die cut the largest one. And then I'm going to take the snowflake frame die set. That comes with the frame and with those extra snowflakes. I went ahead and cut this twice. Again, out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock and a whole bunch of the little snowflakes. We're going to glue these two frames together. I'm using, again, that Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, and I'll dot a little bit on all those little detailed areas as well, just to make sure this stays together nicely. That'll just thicken this up a little bit. I like to add a couple of layers to these little frames. I just think it adds a little bit more dimension. And then let's switch over to the Speckled Egg ink, and I'm going to add it around the edges of this frame, not on the snowflakes just right up to those snowflakes. So again, I've got a small blending brush and I'm just bringing that color in right up to the snowflakes. I want those to stay white. And I think by adding this little bit of shadow, it really highlights those snowflakes a little bit better. And then for our background panel, we're going to use that same speckled egg, and I'm going to go over the entire background. Just a nice even coating on the entire panel. Once that's done, I'm going to heat set those really quickly. And then I'm going to start adding these snowflakes. And we're just going to randomly add them all over this panel. And I'm just going to use that same glue. This takes a little bit of time. You do want to make sure you get plenty of glue on there. And you can kind of spread it out with your finger a little bit. And then you can also just dab it off onto some scrap paper. I'll do that here in a second so that you can see. Um, it removes some of that excess for you. Now you could also use one of your double-sided adhesive sheets before you die cut your snowflakes if you wanted to. And then you just peel the backing off and attach these to your card. So whatever you feel most comfortable with. And there you saw me just kind of dab it off onto my scrap paper 
some of that excess glue and then attach it to that panel. I'm using my Tim Holtz titanium shears and I trimmed off all of that excess and look at how beautiful this panel is. This could be used just the way it is. Add a sentiment and you are good to go. But we're going to keep going. I've got the Doc PH Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. This is a super bright white ink. I've placed a little on my glass media mat. I spritzed it with a little bit of water and we're going to use a small paintbrush and spatter both of these panels. And then it'll just tie everything together, together and give it a little bit more of a snowy look. And again, I just love how that came out. So let's set those aside to dry. And the paper I'm going to use next is the Hero Hues Arctic 100 pound cardstock because it matches that speckled egg really well. And I'm going to cut that panel down to four and a half inches by three and a half inches. And then what I want to do is create a little frame. So I want the opening in my snowflake frame to show. I want all those snowflakes we just applied to the background to show. So I'm just going to cut a little frame that will sit behind the opening of that snowflake frame. So what I'm doing is coming in a quarter inch. I'm using my Fiskars paper trimmer, lining it up at the quarter inch mark. I'm placing the blade down. The blade is right in the center of that little cutting tool. So you'll see that it's right in the center and you can see that at the top as well. There's a little notch there where the center of the blade is. And I'm just going to go from the quarter inch mark down to one quarter inch. And then I'll turn it again and do that same thing. So I'm lining it up on the left hand side at quarter inch and a quarter inch from the top down towards the bottom. So I'm coming in a quarter inch all the way around to create my frame. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to just, if, if I didn't completely get a perfect cut, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to cut this out. This is going to be tucked behind our snowflakes. So once I have that cut, I can attach this piece. And now you can see we can still see through to the underneath behind that snowflake frame. So I've got a little bead of glue on the inside of that frame. I'm going to glue these two together. Now you could certainly just use your speckled egg ink on some white cardstock to create this frame little layer behind your frame since it matches perfectly but I thought it was just easier to use the paper and now our little Santa is going to get tucked in here I want him to look like he's kind of coming out of that snowflake frame so I'm going to tuck one leg in behind and then one arm behind and then the others out front so again it looks like he's kind of popping out I'll tack that down with just a little bit of glue here and there just to hold him in place and then we'll flip this over and pop this up on our card so I'm going to add some foam squares to the back side I've got these scrapbook.com 3d foam squares these are the larger ones and I'm going to place these all around the back and don't forget all the products I'm using today are listed and linked down below and also on my blog and I want plenty of them to make sure this stays up nicely. Now once I have all those in place, I'll use my Cricut weeding tool just to pop off the backings on those. And now we can center this on the card. I was maybe going to turn it on a little bit of an angle, but I changed my mind, decided to put it right in the center of this snowflake panel. And now you can see some of those snowflakes are popping through from behind that frame. And anywhere you see some little openings, you can pop in a few of those leftover snowflakes that you had from before. So I'm just sliding a couple little ones in there. And now let's create the card base with that same Arctic cardstock. This measures four and a quarter by 11 inches, and I scored it at five and a half inches. So we'll have a standard A2 size top folding card, and this panel will be the exact same size. So let's go ahead and glue that down. I've got my Buttons Galore and More jewels. And these are the white jewels, but they're just so pretty. I'm going to put one in the center of each of the snowflakes. And uh, I thought that just added a little sparkle. 
And you can see that I also added a little bit of red and white twine to the top of the card. Now let's add our sentiment. I've got the Christmas sentiment set and look at all the sentiments you get on this. I love this. I use this a lot and I'm going to use the one that says Christmas magic. And I'm also going to use the sentiment for the inside that says warmest wishes for a Merry Christmas. So I stamped both of those onto some white cardstock. For the Christmas magic one, I'm going to cut this on a little bit of an angle, give it kind of that little uh, banner edge to it. And then I'll add some of this speckled egg around the edges of that and also around the edges of my inside sentiment. I'm going to grab a couple more of those little snowflakes. I'm going to place one in each corner on the inside sentiment. And I just thought this finished this off. I thought it was really pretty and really simple and easy to do. Just a way to just kind of take the inside of your card up a notch. We'll put some glue on the back of this and glue it to the center of the inside of the card. I'm not going to put any gems on the inside. I just don't want to add too much bulk there. And then this one is going to get glued right to the front of the card. And I'm going to line the left side of it up with that Arctic cardstock, that Arctic frame. And I'll just glue that in place. So let's take a closer look at the finished card. And again, that background is just so elegant. And I love this little Santa puppet. I just think he's so adorable. And don't forget to check out the other videos I've done using the puppets. And if you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day. Take care.